Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'll be finishing off my two 3D printed pots, getting them all looking just right. I'm going to start with my larger pot here. This is its second coat of primer and I've been sanding it and I still see some imperfections where the feet joined on to the top part. So I'm going to use some automotive body filler to fill in those cracks and sand it smooth. I'll apply the body filler with my finger. This is, I'm getting, I've almost run out of it, but uh, I think there'll be enough to do this. So here there's a crack there that needs some filler. I want that joint to be invisible in the final pot. So I want people to look at this pot and not be able to tell it was 3D printed. Body filler sands off really easily, so that's what it's designed for. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, I'll let that dry and we'll come back and give it a sanding. On my smaller oval shaped pot, I had applied the first coat of the imitation glaze and then I had rubbed off the edges to show a bit of the clay color through, just like you'd see on a real, you know, a full size bonsai pot that's made from clay. So I'm going to sand it trying to touch up those edges and just make it all ready for the second coat. I've got a container of water now, so I'll soak my sandpaper and see how the wet sanding goes. Yeah, that's feeling better on the sandpaper. And you can kind of see the sandpaper turns kind of a cloudy color. You can see it here. So it's just kind of washing the, the particles away so it doesn't clog up your sandpaper. So on these ceramic coatings, usually it starts off quite thin and transparent at the top and it, it kind of runs down on the firing process and gets thicker towards the bottom. So that is the effect we'll be going for. And this 800 grit sandpaper doesn't take off much at a time. It's uh, quite smooth and non-abrasive. I probably need an airbrush to kind of get the exact look I want, building it up with thin coats. Maybe we'll try that someday. Get our airbrush working. Now I'm just going to get the inner lip here, and then I think let it dry quickly and then it'll be time for the top coat. Okay, here I go. I'm going to put a thin layer on top here. I'm just going around the edges first. Trying to get a nice clean line on the bottom. Okay, I've gone around the sides. Now I'm going to go around the top lip. Like that. And, and then I'll try my rubbing off the corners again with the far saw. See if that works again. I think I took a little too much off last time. I don't know. This is tricky doing this. Maybe I should just let this dry and then come back and sand it off. I might get a little more control. I'll try that approach. Because last time it kind of worked pretty good, but Kind of looked good in some spots, and other spots it didn't look so good, so. Okay. Now I just need a little bit around the inner lip of the pot here. And that'll finish it off. Okay, I think that looks good. Set it down. Cap our paint. 
clean the brush and let everything dry. I'm going to take the cream pot away and put it in another room to dry. I don't want to get the dust from sanding to stick to the cream colored top coat. So I'll take this one away and we'll start sanding the bigger pot. All right, I'll start sanding the body filler now. Yeah, it sands really nicely. I've got the larger pot all sanded up. All the body fillers blended in. So now it's time to put another coat of primer on and see how it looks. All right, here I go. Get some paint on the brush and over the body filler. Let's see how it turned out. So far it looks really good. All right, I'll just make sure all my edges are looking good here. And that is it. We'll let that dry. I've let the two pots dry for several days, so the paint should be good and hard on them. And now I'll try sanding them. So the first sanding I'll do is on the lip of this pot to just try and get a bit of the uh, clay color to show through. All right, here I go. Again, I'm going to use wet sanding and I'll try and just take a very light amount off the edge here, just so my primer starts to show through. Yeah, that's looking good. I'll do the inner lip also. Just kind of helps define the lip of the pot too. I think this is good. I think I'm not going to make it too even. I want it to look kind of natural looking. So I'm going to leave it at that. That's not too bad. I'll take the pot and just give it a wash in the sink just to get all this uh, primer dust off of it. I'm going to work on the larger pot now and I wanted to get that kind of antique look to it. So I've got this walnut stain. Neil from our orchard group collected this stain and put it together. And I'm going to try painting it on the primer, see if it soaks in and makes a nice color. And then I'll uh, sand it away to kind of blend it in from dark at the bottom to lighter at the top. I'll try it, see if it works. Uh, ooh! <laughs> that was a little pressurized, that bottle there. Let me just close that up again. Yeah, she's pressurized. So this stain, it's made from the husks of black walnuts, which is a native tree to Canada here. And it's it was commonly used for stain in the old days. A nice kind of brown stain. And so let's see if it works. I don't know how strong this solution is here, but we'll try it and see if it works. So here I go. Now I probably don't want to get this in my hands because when you're handling black walnuts, it can, uh, it can really stain your hands good. And stain them for many, many days. So I don't know, it's, it's not the darkest in the world. I think I probably want something with a more dramatic effect. Here's some pots that I've painted in the past and I've tried to get that antique look to them. You can see how I've added black paint at the bottom and kind of faded it up into the pot. And I think the black is too dark. I think I need to mix the black with their iron oxide color and kind of get a dark brown color rather than the black. I think that's just too much of a difference. So I'm going to try that today. I'll start by adding my red oxide primer into the cup. 
And then I, I'll add some black to it. And I'll keep adding more black and I'll do several coats. So my first coat will be just a little darker than the red oxide. And then I'll add more black and paint another coat on and that'll be a little darker. And then I'll try sanding it away to try and get that graduation of the colors from the light to dark. See if that works anyway. Now I need to pour some in here because I'll need quite a bit of primer. It's getting a little thick this stuff. I've had it several years. It's getting a little chunky but then I'll add a bit of black to it. Okay I'm going to add the black just with the brush because I don't want too much. Well, I think there's a bit of a difference. It's subtle, which is, I guess, what I want. So I'll give it a whirl and we'll see how it looks. I'm ready to paint, but before I paint, I was thinking I probably should give this a light sanding just to remove any of the paint lines. So it's a smooth finish when I apply the next darker coat. I can sand that away and it won't have all these bumps in it from the, you know, brush, brush marks. So I'll do that. All right, here I go with the sandpaper. It's time now to put that darker layer on the pot. So here I go. This paint usually dries a darker color too, so. Okay, now I've got to paint the sides here. The second coat has been applied to the larger pot, that darker top coat, and when that's dry, I'll come back, sand it, and then I'll apply even a darker coat. I've decided to put a kind of crackle finish on this pot. So I have a little scriber here, and I'm going to scribe in the little crackle lines all over it, and then I'll paint it in with a, a darker color, and then sand it all smooth and uh, see how it looks. It should look quite nice. I think it'll give the pot a real miniature look if I do all these fine lines in it, you know, so they're really small and detailed. I think when you see a photograph of this pot without any reference, it should look very miniature. That's my hope anyway. So here I go. I was online looking at the uh, kind of crackle lines in these pots and generally there's kind of one big line that kind of sweeps in a curve and then there's another one that kind of follows and the rest are just little fine lines that are quite random in between. Here's a look at the progress so far. I'm not sure the paint is not sticking to the primer that well. So some of the chunks are kind of flaking off in sections. However, I'll keep going. It may provide quite an interesting look and then I might have to go in and touch up some of these areas if it's just not looking right. So I'll keep going and uh, see what the overall effect is. Here's the progress so far. I found the best method is to kind of make divide it into large segments at first, sort of like that. And maybe another one here, like that. And then to subdivide the segments, like that, subdividing all these segments, kind of joining all the lines up with kind of lightning bolt type lines. And then once you have those divided, then you further subdivide them, making fine little plates 
in between like that. And you just keep subdividing until it looks like a nice, you know, even kind of spacing between the plates. So, you know, the, there's no areas that stick out as having too large a plate. And I've got the, some of the paint flakes off. And I, I think it'll look okay in the end. I think I've just got to run kind of a light glaze of the ivory color over top of all this. Sand it all smooth, and I think it'll look really good. I'm hoping. So that's where I'm at. I've done this section. I have to go all the way around the pot, do the inner lip and the top edge. So I got a ways to go. I'm working away at the surface finish, and I'm really liking it. It's, uh, it's totally not what I expected to be doing. Kind of, uh, you know, chipping away the paint layer. It's... Uh, yeah, so I've started going around the top here. I'm, I don't know, getting there. I've kind of roughed in some of the lines at the back here. I finished doing the cracking effect on the uh, pot glaze. And now I want to put a very dilute coat of this white top coat just to fill in all the cracks and make them a little more subtle. I mixed up a very dilute top coat color and I'll try painting it on. I, I think it's probably too dilute, but we'll see. This is kind of like a wash, I guess, is what I'm doing. Okay, I'll let that sit and we'll see what happens. It may be bubbling the paint a bit. It seems to be quite rough in some areas, but uh, we'll see. We'll let that sit. I've been letting the uh, pot sit for a little bit and it's definitely the wash is kind of run down to the bottom and it's not doing what I wanted. So I'm going to touch it up with a slightly stronger paint job. See how that's looking. Oh, maybe that's too much. If I dab it with the paper towel a bit. Yeah, that's better. These large areas where the paint has come off, I think I want to fill them in a bit more. I don't know, I think that looks weird. Hmm. We'll leave it at that. See how it turns out. While the smaller pot is drying, I'll go back to working on the large pot. It's dry enough to give a light sanding and then apply a darker top coat. All right, we'll give this coat a light rub down just to smooth out any brush strokes so the next coat goes on even smoother. It's quite a nice color brownness now. I like that darker brown color. All right, I'll start adding more black now. And from last time, I needed to add quite a bit of black to darken it up. All right, here I go. So this color looks the same as the primer here when it's dry. So it darkens up as it dries. So when this layer dries, it should be even darker. In fact, it's quite hard. It's hard to tell where I painted because it's almost exactly the same color, except it's shinier. Now, I can hold it from the inside here through the holes. And I should be able to paint the sides okay. With both pots painted, now I've just got to wait until they dry to go on to the next steps. I've let the pots dry overnight, so I'm ready to put another coat on them. I think my larger pot needs one more coat of a darker color. It is quite dark now, but I just want a little bit of the really dark underneath the lips and in the details. So I'll put one more coat on this and on my oval pot, I'm going to put a gray coat of primer on it. I've been looking at these crackle finishes on the internet and generally the white glaze has a gray color in all the cracks. So I'm going to paint it with primer 
And the theory is that the primer sands more easily than the top coat. So I should be able to sand the primer down and just leave it in all the cracks I've created. And it should give me that white top coat with the gray infill on all the cracks. That's the theory anyway. Let's see if it works. All right, here I go with the gray primer top coat. Here goes nothing. <laughs> I could also try wiping it off. I don't know if that would work. Maybe I'll give that a try first. And if that's no good, maybe I'll go back to, you know, letting it dry and sanding it off. I do have to get this all smooth in the end. Smooth and glossy, so. Now, before I get too far, I'm going to try while I'm wiping things off, I'm going to try that wiping off. So here I go. Well, gets rid of a lot of primer. Well, it's not bad. It kind of gets it in the right direction. Seems to leave the primer in all the cracks. Yeah, maybe it's a good idea to wipe it. I don't know. I'll keep painting it in and then decide, you know, what I think will work best. I've decided that I'm going to leave the primer on with a thick layer. I think if I wipe it away, I won't get enough coverage in some of these areas where it's, you know, the... Uh, red oxide primer showing through. So I think I'll get a better effect by leaving it on a nice thick coat and then sanding it smooth. And I think because it's such a rough finish at the moment, I think it'll help make the pot nice and smooth and help give that illusion of being a ceramic pot, a miniature ceramic pot. All right, I've got it all painted. Rather a thick layer of primer, but that should dry quickly. I'll keep it near the warm heater and the fan will be blowing on it, so it should be all right. All right, I'll put that away and let it dry. It's time now to mix up the dark coat for the brown pot. So I'll add some black to it, adding a good amount because I want this one fairly dark. And this will only probably appear in all the uh, recesses and hard to get at corners. So this is a little different than using washes and I hope it gives a more natural appearance. I'm mixing the color up and it's looking nice and dark. I think it'll work quite nicely for that final coat. Before I start painting, I'll give this last coat of a sand just to get it as smooth as possible. So I'll start with the bottom. I can notice that's darker than the previous coat, even when it's wet. So I've definitely gone dark enough. Now it'll be important to get the inside of these holes. You want those looking nice and dark. So this pot again, it's free to download on Thingiverse. You can print it out any size you want. You can scale it in, you know, if you want it a little longer and maybe not quite so wide, you can scale it in the X and the Y axes, uh, you know, it'll change your sidewall thickness just slightly, but you can do it to get slightly different proportions. Or if you're good at modeling, you can download the model and modify it. Changing the dimensions, the feet, anything you want on it. So it's free to download. And, you know, if you have access to a 3D printer or you want to buy a 3D printer, you can make your own pots. Any style you want. I think that's kind of cool. There's a lot of people, some of my viewers, you know, they write in that they cannot get bonsai pots, clay pots, where they live. But they do, you know, some of them have a printer at a university that's close by, or they can afford to buy one. And they can make their own pots, which I think is really exciting. And I think 
a plastic pot is just as valid of a pot as a clay pot. It's just a different material. You know, the artwork goes into the design of the pot, just the same as it does a clay pot. Um, you know, finishing them is, takes a lot of work and so I think it's just a valid, just as valid as any clay pot. The only difference is the material is dug from the ground in one and the other is sort of manufactured material. The final coat is on the large pot, so we'll let that dry and then we'll come back and do a lot of sanding. The gray primer is dry on my smaller pot, so now comes the moment of truth where I sand it down to try and get the white porcelain finish with the gray cracks between. Will it work? We'll find out soon. I'm not sure if I should wet sand this or try it dry. Um, I think I'll try dry sanding it first. I'm using 400 grit. And then as I get closer to the final finish, I'll switch to a finer grade sandpaper and do some wet sanding. So here I go. This will be uh, interesting. I'm already revealing some of the white there. I probably am better to wet sand this, I think, just because my sandpaper is clogging up. So. Here I go with the wet sanding. So I've got to get it down to the point where the white is the main color and the gray is just filling in the little cracks. Uh, hopefully I can do that. I don't know. Dealing with a hand painted surface that isn't perfectly smooth. So I'm hoping, you know, the Primer is easier to sand away than the the uh, white top coat. It's a primer is a softer paint, so I'm hoping I can sand this primer away right down to the white top coat without removing the top coat and going into the base color of the uh, red oxide primer. I'm getting some good results. So keep going here. Yeah, there's a few primer spots showing through. But you know, the basic effect is working. Maybe some touch up will be required. Here's a shot of the pot after sanding. It's not quite what I envisioned, but it's, it's interesting. I'll spin it around so you can see it from all sides. I'm back to the front. I'm going to leave the small pot and we'll go on to the larger one, finishing that. Here's a shot of the large pot now. And here's the color of the red oxide primer, just for comparison. So I'm hoping to get a similar effect with the darkened feet and all the darkened areas where I can't get with the sandpaper. Kind of give it some natural patina. So the next step will be to sand this all nice and smooth. All right, I'm going to wet sand this one also. I think it'll uh, make my sandpaper last a little longer. So I'm going to start with the lip here. I'm going to just start to sand away that dark coat. And as I sand it smooth, I'll reveal my lighter coats below. Now these 3D printed pots, when they're painted, they get a natural patina outside too, the weathering and that. So, you know, as these plastic pots get older, they do get patina by themselves. Okay, that's looking good, I think. I'll keep going. I don't know how easy it'll be to see the, the color gradients on camera, but I'll, I'll certainly show you it all in the end when I'm done sanding. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but I'm getting kind of a, almost a marble texture. Might be a good technique for simulating marble. 
using kind of gray and white. My good turntable from Adrian is outside in the greenhouse awaiting the next hardy tree to be worked on, which should be soon. The weather is supposed to warm up again. It's uh, We just had a three day snowstorm here, so it's been pretty hard to get outside. Did lots of shoveling, that's for sure, but not much bonsai work. If I really, really don't like it, I can always put another top coat of my darkest color on and just leave it at that. Smooth it all out and that's my backup plan. It's always good to have some kind of a backup plan. I think I probably should have some newspaper down underneath this. It's getting very messy and I think it'll just keep getting worse as I go on. I'll get some newspaper. Except I can't turn the camera off. My hands are too messy. I should have had paper towels too. I should think ahead some days. Um, <laughs> what if I use the end of the brush and I can push the off button on the camera or the stop recording button? Okay, I'm back. And a little more organized. I have paper towels and newspapers and I have a way of turning the record button off when my hands are all messy. I think that worked quite well. Yeah, so this is looking it's smooth, but it's kind of strange looking. It looks like like I said, marble. I don't know. Yeah, so there's, so I can definitely see the dark color, the medium and the light now. Same with up here, I can see dark, medium and the light. Okay, I think that's good. I'm going to let it dry. I'm gonna wash it, let it dry, and then evaluate this, uh, this concept. Here's the pot, it's dried and it's turned a matte color. And I'm really liking it. It's looking like an antique clay pot. So I'm going to rotate it around. Show you all the different sides. Very random, the, uh, the coloring on it, which looks good. I'm still going to try and get rid of some of these streaks from the brush strokes. So I'm going to work out dry sanding it a bit just to bring out a bit more of the patina. Yeah, but it's looking really good. I've got a bit of streaking from the uh, paintbrush, so I just want to rub some sections. Maybe more kind of vertical, as if, you know, water's been running down and kind of streaking the clay. A lot of the antiquing comes from the clay itself, the minerals in the clay and the firing process. Yeah, without the wet sanding, you can see the surface finish much more easily. The pot is taking shape nicely. I'll rotate it around and kind of see it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is when I look at model makers, um, one thing that really bugs me is they'll build a model airplane and they'll do all the weathering and all the chipping and the oil streaks. They'll do it all right. And then when they're done, they go and spray it all with a matte coat of varnish. And in real life, every surface on an airplane has a different sheen to it. Some are shiny surfaces and some are dull. And when they paint the whole model with a matte surface, it just makes it look artificial and, and non-realistic. So this pot is kind of at that stage now. It's all matte and it kind of looks funny. So the next step, I'm going to get some rubbing compound and get a cloth and I'm going to rub and shine up some of the edges just to give it that sheen that a kind of a show pot would get. So I'll do that next. I've got my mother's pure polish 
it's good stuff. It, it really shines up paint on cars and that. So I'll apply a bit to my rag here. Not a rag, it's a microfiber cloth. It's supposed to be good for polishing cars and that. So that should be enough and I'll just rub it into the rag. And we'll see if this works. I have no idea if it will or not. You can always tell if it's working because you get the color on your on your cloth, see? So it's working. So you would just polish up the areas of the pot that get handled a lot. And you see, you know, in nature, when you're lifting pots up all the time, your hands kind of smooth the surfaces and polish them. Yeah, it's shining it up. Oh, I see. All I had to do was rub the polish off. Okay, so I'll use the clean part of the cloth and I'll rub it to clean with the polish. Oh yeah, and that, that comes out shiny then. Not shiny like a car, but shinier than it was. I think that's enough. Maybe a little more on the inside lip here. Oh yeah, I like that. So it's got some shiny areas and lots of dull areas and that, that's what gives it that kind of patina look. Yeah, I'm liking that. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the shine on the camera, but we'll rotate it around and you can have a look. Here's a look at the imitation clay pot. I'll rotate it around. to come up with my own chop to put on the bottom of the pot. I think that would be kind of cool. Maybe a bonsai zone logo or just my name, Nigel Saunders or something like that. I'll switch now from my large clay type pot to my small ceramic landscape pot, getting it all finished and looking good. It's time now to evaluate the pot. I'm, I'm looking at it here. I'll spin it around for you. I'm worried. I wonder if I need to touch up these, these areas that the primer is showing through. I think I do need to touch it up. Right now it looks like paint that got scuffed off and I don't like that look. So I think if I touch up those areas where, you know, that clay color is showing through, I think it'll be more convincing as a ceramic coating around the pot. So I'll get out a little touch up brush and start doing that work. To do this fine work, I'm getting out my magnifiers. I got this in the discount store. I think they were, I think $2 and 50 cents. And they're three, 0.5 magnification. So it's almost like wearing magnifying glasses on your eyes. And you have to get up pretty close for to be able to focus on whatever you're looking at. So it'll really help me get in and do that fine detail work. And the other thing I've got is a little fine brush that I hope I can go in and just touch paint to all those little surfaces that need fixing up. I've got my magnifying glasses on. So here I go, I've got touch up paint and I'll just dab it on the surfaces that need a little fixing. There you can see it, it's really fixed that surface up. I don't know if you can see it really well, but yeah, that, that really, really helps. 
I think that's all it needed was a little touching up. Even the little lip here, I had some areas I didn't really like. So I'm touching that up too. The other thing I'm doing is I'm pinging that lip and just kind of smearing it with my finger a bit. And it softens that, that clay edge. Gives me just the right sheen on it. To look like the glaze is just kind of almost almost there but not quite. Or is there, but just slightly. Yeah, it's looking really good. Wow. This is turning out to be a fairly good day. Uh, when I started this video, I wasn't sure if any of this was going to work out. And in the end, it, I, we made it work. It's, uh, it's looking really good. Wow. Here's a shot of a monk getting ready to plant his favorite trees in his bonsai pot. I'll be adding a glaze coat to this pot once all that paint's dry. I'll show you an update in an upcoming video. That's all for today. We got our two 3D printed bonsai pots looking good. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>